Welcome to our restorative yoga practice and today's focus will be on releasing fear through opening our hips. We'll do a lot of gentle movements to stretch our hip, our hip area and um, if anything doesn't feel good to your body, please try a different posture find something that does feel good. There should be no pain in yoga. Our hips are a, a very large joint in our body, the largest joint, and they do store emotions. So you may feel some emotional release during this class as well, and that's absolutely fine and natural. So let's start in Baddha Konasana or butterfly pose. And I'll invite three sounds at the bell as we settle in. So butterfly pose or cobbler's pose. We're seated, you may want to have a blanket or cushion beneath your hips. And you can let your knees start to open. If this is too much for your legs, you can also place pillows between your knees and have them more supported. We're going to start with a little self-massage. I have um, an orange aromatherapy that I really enjoy the smell of. And I'm going to put a little bit into my palm. You don't have to have this. And um, where it is summer, if you're going to be out in the sunshine, this can cause a little photosensitivity. So just be thoughtful about that. But I'm going to put it into both hands rub my hands together, generate a little warmth, and find the inner soles of my feet, the arches of my feet with my thumbs. And I'm going to apply some pressure to the arch of my feet, being careful not to collapse. So as we try to reach our soles, you may feel your, your spine starting to round and see if you can Pull your shoulders back and lift the crown of your head. And just let your thumbs find the inner soles of your feet and apply a gentle pressure. This can help release some tension in our hips. We're activating the psoa muscles and the adrenal glands. And the scent of oranges brings me back to when I was a child and we would go to Florida and we would get a little baby orange tree in the airport. And I loved the smell of the leaves. I'm growing one of those outside now. And when it gets its blossoms in the winter, the smell of those little orange blossoms is amazing. So maybe we can look forward to that in the winter. Notice what's showing up for you right now. What emotions are you feeling? Where is your mind? See if you can connect into your body. 
And find now a comfortable seated position for your legs. That might be just cross-legged, or you can keep your feet in the position that you have them in, but find something comfortable and see if you can lengthen your spine through the crown of your head. We're going to bring our awareness to our second chakra, the sacral plexus chakra, which is right below our navel, right below the belly button. Let's find that special sacred place, Bodhisattva. And it might feel good to place your left hand on your belly, on your belly, right below your belly button, and then your right hand over. And see if you can bring your breath awareness to this place of your body. It's a beautiful place, it stores creativity. And if you wish, see if you can start to create a large circle that extends all the way out to your hips with your hands, a gentle massage. Awakening the energies in your body. You can go in either direction as slowly as you wish. Let's start to let the circle become smaller. And smaller until it stops right below our belly buttons. And now we can do a little bit of tapping with our fingers in that area. Again, awakening energies, releasing emotions. And we're going to invite a mudra called Shakti Mudra. So let's clap our hands together three times very loudly. Feel that fire and heat. And again, massage the hands. And they're gonna really start to feel like they're warming up now. Shakti Mudri, this mudra is the goddess of vital energy. We're gonna invite some vital energy. And you can take your hands and place them together. You'll really feel some warmth now. Keep the ring finger and pinky fingers straight and let the second finger and middle finger fold down and then tuck your thumbs into that little nook. So something like this. And bring Dr. Mudra down near your heart center. Let's see if you can soften Soften through your shoulders. Soften through your jaws, and the muscles around your eyes. And imagine a beautiful orange ball of light. And see where this appears for you. If you're comfortable, you can close your eyes. An illuminated ball of orange light.
And see if you can imagine yourself becoming one with this energy source. As you inhale in, you draw in from this source of energy. And as you exhale, it gets even larger and more beautiful and vibrant. Now let's gently release Shakti Mudra. We'll invite it again later. And stretch our legs out in front of us in Dandasana. Staff pose. Pull your toes back towards your nose and pull the top of your head up as if there was a silken cord drawing your whole spine upwards. Roll your shoulders back and down. And now let's start with opening and closing our toes. So expansion and contraction. Feeling the muscles in the backs of our legs. Pointing and flexing our toes. And if your mind is drifting forward to what's coming next, See if you can bring yourself to really enjoy whatever asana or posture that we're taking in this moment. Now let's do circles of our ankles. One direction and the other direction. And Bring our right foot up next to our left foot. Now cross it over. Take a deep inhale and wrap your left arm around your right knee. Inhale and raise your right arm up to the sky. See how much you can fill and feel that stretch already in the right outer hip. You start to turn your body, bringing your right arm to balance like a tripod behind you. And gaze softly over the right shoulder. Bring out your spine in seated spinal twist. And find integrity in your left foot by flexing your toes. Gaze is soft. Breathe into your right hip. And now come back to center. Bring your right leg next to your left and just Wiggle waggle out your legs, opening up the, the muscles. Left foot comes to the ground. Find that elongation in your spine. Right foot is flexed. Now bring left foot over right. Right arm wraps around left. Inhale and reach your left arm up as high as you can. And now start to twist over to the other side. You can always add on to this posture if you wish you can bring that opposite arm to press on the outer knee. 
and then you'll feel it more in your shoulders. But right now we're focused on the hips, so it might be better. Another option is to keep the right arm wrapped. But do what your body needs. Maybe you wish for some more stretching in the shoulders. Breathe into the left hip. And notice what comes up. Very nice. And bring our legs back down in front of us. You can take your fists and just do a little tapping along the front thigh muscles and along the hips. Avoiding where the bones are, so we'll leave the, the joints around, but just do the tapping. And if with your fists is too much, you can also just do very light with your fingertips. So ask your body, what does it need in this moment? And we're going to next do something called hip baby. And I'm going to give some different options because each of us is different. So again, left leg is, is out straight. And right foot is going to start by coming to the ground. So knee is bent. Right knee is bent. You can start with, if you wish, just bring your right foot on top of your left thigh muscle. And this might be enough. Remember to try to avoid floppy feet. So if you can, flex your feet. And if your fingers felt like that arch massage felt really nice earlier and they, your thumb just happens to find the arch of your foot again, that is wonderful too. If you're feeling a lot of stretching here, then you can stay here. You can also start to lean forward. Noticing the long muscle from your lower left buttocks all the way down through your Achilles heel, the hamstrings. Or if you wish to go a little bit further, you can take your right foot and put it into the crook of your left elbow and see if you can then pull your body back so that you're not rounding forward. So see if you can bring the crown of your head back. And if you are able to hold your hip baby this way, which might involve cradling your right knee with your right hand, you can start to do some gentle rolling on the right buttock. But again, if this is too much, you could just have your knee bent. And if all of this is too much, you might want to try just lying on your back in reconstructed rest pose for a little bit. There might be some days that this feels really nourishing to you and other days that is just too much. But it's a beautiful day here in the summer and many of us might be gardening later. So we wanna see if we can stretch our hips and open them a little bit. And now come to stillness. And let your arms start to release your right foot down to your left quadriceps muscle. And you can open your arms, 
with a deep breath and fold forward. Releasing any of the emotions that might have come up. Deep inhales and deep exhales. Feel free to exhale through open mouth. And now come back to a seated position and gently bring your right leg near your left and do any type of movement to release some of the tension. We'll repeat on the other side. Each side of your body will be different. So you may or may not be able to do the same things on this other side. Flex your right foot, right leg is pointed out in front of you strong. And now bring your left foot over your right thigh muscle. And if you wish, again, find the inner sole of your foot, the arch, or anywhere that you're Fingers wish to massage. Lengthen through the spine and think about all the variations that you can choose for your body. Lifting now, if you wish, your right, your left foot into the crook of your right elbow and your left hand finds your left knee. And pause here for a moment and breathe into the sensation. And then if you wish, you can start to roll out on the left side, either direction. Nowhere to go, nowhere to be, nothing to do. See if you can be here now with your body and all the sensation. And when you feel ready, start to release your left foot. Let it come back down to the ground. And we'll open our legs into wide-legged forward fold. Our affirmation tip for today is, I embrace all my emotions. I let them flow through me. I embrace all my emotions. I let them flow through me. So notice what might show up. And try to notice it without judgment. Let's sweep our arms up with a deep inhale. And then as we exhale, slowly hinge forward. Letting your hands find the earth. And see if you can name any emotion that is showing up right now that you don't wish to keep. Let that name of the emotion rise to the surface. Inhale it, name it, and then exhale. And let the emotion the seed you no longer wish to water, let it flow through your hands into the earth. This is a wonderful exercise to do outside. Uh, 
a grounding and a surrendering, releasing of emotion, letting Mother Earth receive it without judgment. Let's start to come back up and tuck our left foot in. So we're in a half straddle and we'll sweep over to the right, opening through the ribs. And then flowing our left hand down to the ground and tucking our right foot in again, flowing over to the left. Deep inhale, deep exhale. And let's repeat that. If you have something beneath you, shift it away for a moment because we're going to next do half wild thing. So this time we're going to tuck our left foot in and our right foot doesn't have to be quite as wide as it was. And when we come over, we're going to actually start to actually, something's not right here. Yes, <laughs> I have my foot tucked in uh, op opposite of what I was expecting. So bring your left foot in again, and now flip your left foot so that your knee is bent. Your left knee is bent, your right leg is straight. And this time we're going to do half wild things. So with our inhale, if you wish, you can start to rise up. Feeling the strength in your right arm. And now coming back down again and we'll switch sides. So left leg goes out and right foot, right knee tucks behind you. Left hand plants to the earth, inhale and raise up and back into your version of wild thing, stretching the hip flexor and strengthening through the left forearm, the left shoulder. Very, very nice. And now we will just windshield wipe our legs to the right and the left. Letting an audible ah come, releasing. And now let's come to child's pose. And if, you, if your knees are tender, you can definitely put your blanket back beneath them. Traditional balasana or child's pose, your knees will be open, your big toes touching behind you, and you're going to lean forward. Letting your forehead come to the earth, Balasana is a very restorative posture. Feel the opening in your hips. And I'm going to invite a reading by Thich Nhat Hanh. So if this posture is not something you can tolerate for a minute or two, then feel free to um, do more of a fetal curl with your knees together and your hands behind you. You just won't get as much of the hip stretch that way. So this is from a book called Fear, Essential Wisdom for Getting Through the Storm by Thich Nhat Hanh. I'm going to read to you just for a moment about belly breathing. There are several simple methods for taking care of our strong emotions. One is belly breathing. 
breathing from the abdomen. When we are caught in a strong emotion like fear or anger, our practice is to bring our attention down to the abdomen. To stay on the level of intellect is not safe. Strong emotions are like a storm, and to stand in the middle of a storm is very dangerous. Yet that's what most of us do when we get upset. We stay out in the storm of our feelings and they overwhelm us. Instead, we have to ground ourselves by bringing our attention downward. We focus on our abdomen and we practice mindful breathing, just giving all our attention to the rise and fall of the belly. So see now if you can bring your breath awareness to your belly. And notice how you feel. And let's rise up gently and slowly to tabletop. So tabletop, we are on our knees and our, the tops of our feet are flat behind us. Our palms are open wide. Press up and let your belly fall, inhaling. Slight lift of your chin and then exhaling, arching your back. Inhaling, belly fall. And exhaling, pressing your spine upwards. Inhaling. Exhaling. And now from this posture, we're going to extend our right leg straight out to the right. And let your feet find warrior pose so that your toes are, you're pressing into the outer edge of your right foot. Come up and bring your arms out to the sides, feeling that stretch in your inner thigh. Inhale and let your body arch over to the right. And then come back to your arms out in T. And let your body come forward again to table. Right knee comes back to the ground, sink your belly. And exhale, press it all out. Extend your right leg to the side and come up, arms out in T. Deep inhale and flow over now to the left. Feeling the opening in the left inner thigh. And let your breath bring your arms back up to T. And back down to tabletop. And from here, we're going to come to downward facing dog. So tuck your toes under and press your body upwards. Your tail is lifted. Feel the opening in your shoulders. And let your heels pedal down to the ground one at a time. And 
feeling the lengthening again through all the muscles in the back of your leg, from the base of your buttocks all the way down to your Achilles. And now come to stillness and raise your right leg. We're going to do some hip flexor flow next. Right leg is raised, open your hip so that your knee is bent just for a moment. And now straighten your leg and pull your right knee in between your hands. You might have to help it a little bit, coax it there with your hands. So right knee is bent and your chest might be resting on your right thigh muscle. Now let your left leg come down to the ground and flatten your left foot. And let's flow back. So now we're in more of a runner stretch. Your chin is pointing at your big toe on the right side. Or you can bring it down closer to your knee. And roll forward, raising your arms up to the sky. Deep inhale, and then fold down and roll back. Feeling the stretch in the hamstring muscles. All of these muscles are connected. So we want to help wake up all of them. Sweeping up, inhaling, and then folding down, framing your right foot. Tuck your left toes under and swing your right foot behind you so now you're in plank. Pause here for a moment, feel the heat, the strengthening in your body. Your knees can come down, feet flatten. Tuck your elbows into your body and lower yourself to the ground. Sweeping up with your inhale, down, upward facing dog, and then tucking your toes under and pressing back to downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in and an exhale. Ah, let that all go. Left foot comes up to the sky. Press your right heel down and now open your left hip. Just for a moment, left leg straightens and now comes between your right and your left hand. Let your right knee come to the ground and your right foot flatten. And press back. Runners stretch on the left side. Breathe into your hamstring. Blow forward and sweep your arms up. And exhale, flow down. And forward. Inhaling to the sky, to the sun, and exhaling down to the ground. And this time, when you come forward, plant your hands and press your right, your left foot back, so you're in plank again. Knees come down to the ground, your feet flatten, tuck your elbows, lower yourself down and sweep up, upward facing dog. Look over your right shoulder, look over your left shoulder. And we'll press back up to downward facing dog. Now this next movement is going to be to get us into pigeon. So before you do anything, 
Maybe now would be a good time to just come to your knees because I want to make sure that you have a block nearby. A block or you can roll up a pillow, but something to place under one of your hips. So in Downward Facing Dog, we're going to raise our right leg up to the sky, pull it through. But this time, we're going to balance on the right hip. So the best way to do this is to slide and tuck a block under the hip where the knee is bent. You can start to wiggle your foot up so that it's perpendicular to your knee. My foot will not go anywhere near there, so I can't model this behavior, but if you have the flexibility, you can bring your right foot more in line with your right knee. This is pigeon pose, and this is one very well known for releasing emotions through the hips. You can stay up and tense your fingers if this feels good to you, or you can start to come down onto your forearms. Yogi's choice. Or if you wish to extend even further, you can bring your arms out in front of you and lower your head to the ground. Or you could have your head on another block. So try some different variations of pigeon. Let's see if you can now find stillness. See if you can deepen and quiet your breathing. When you're ready, start to come up and take the block or pillow from beneath your hip and tuck your left foot under and bring your right leg up to the sky. In three-legged dog, press your left heel down and open your hip. And now bring your right foot gently to the earth. Deep inhale and hug. Let that go. And now we'll raise our left leg up to the sky. And pull our left knee forward. Pigeon. Now on the left side, half pigeon. You can tuck a block under to give yourself just a little room, maybe tenting up on your finger pads. Notice what's showing up for you. Is there resistance to this posture? Thoughts like, oh, how much longer is this going to last? And smile at those thoughts. Come down to your forearms if you wish. And you can wiggle 
your foot so that it becomes more in line with your knee. This would be now your left foot. And find the half pigeon on this side that feels best to your body. Breathe into the sensation in your left hip. And see if you can find a place of stillness where your breath can deepen and become luxurious and even quiet. And now gently start to come up, removing the support that you had under your left hip and coming up to downward facing dog, three legged dog on the right side, opening your left hip. And now bringing your legs down to the ground. You might want to start turning on your mat. So turn your body so that you are now in wide-legged forward fold. But your feet are, your toes are pointing slightly inwards. And you're on the long side, your feet are going to the long side of your mat. And breathe into the sensation. And bend your knees. And bring your hands to your thighs. And gently start to come up. Very nice. And you can heel toe slightly in. You're going to do a little goddess pose. So... Now we will point our toes outwards and just start with a little up and down. Maybe your hands come to your lower back, let your thumbs do a little massage. And now let's pause in our goddess. So we're going to bring our sacrum down towards the ground, knees are bent, and invite Shakti Mudra again. So hands come together, pinky finger and fourth finger stay straight, tuck your third finger and your second finger down, and then tuck your thumbs inward. And bring Shakti Mudra in front of your heart and feel the heat. Goddess of vital energy, lift your right heel and lower. Lift your left heel and lower. Lift both heels and hold. Breathe and release. Bring your arms up overhead and down to the side. And let's do that again. So sweep up and release all of that. And now we'll do a little Sindhasana. So 
bending our knee to the right and to the left. Hands can start on your hips. And then maybe you wish to add your arms in a little bit of a flow. And slow this down so it feels really beautiful like dance to you. Body that chakra, that sacral plexus chakra is about creativity. So bring some of your own creativity to this. And now let's come to stillness and heel toe our feet in. And we'll just close with our standing postures by doing a little hip opening. So you stand on one foot and let your hip open to the right and to the left. You're going to hear all kinds of popping and crackling happening in here. And imagine that's all those seeds you don't wish to water anymore, the weeds of your negative emotions. Very nice. And let's shake that all out. So flow your arms. And feel the opening in the spine. And let the movement become quieter and slower until your body comes to stillness in Tadasana. Hands stretched open wide. Feet are firmly planted to the earth. Body is strong. And open your hips and bring your hands together in prayer and come down to your version of Malasana, which might be tipped forward if your heels don't find the earth. And your beautiful version is just right. Wherever you are, your hips are opening, you're grounding, and all the emotions that have come up are flowing through your feet into the earth. Bring your hands behind you and Bring your hands to the front of your shins now and roll back, giving yourself a big hug across your knees, loving what your body can do for you. Press your sacrum down to the ground and flatten the back of your head. Breathe here for a moment in loving embrace. And now take your toes, your big toes in your fingers and open your legs to happy baby. And just roll out any tension that has lingered in the lower back. Opening the hips. Playful like a baby. And now bring your legs in and let your feet find the ground. Stretch your legs out one at a time. Moving slowly with loving tenderness into your Shavasana. 
your final resting posture. And you can choose to do this with traditional, which would be hands by your side and your feet are out in front of you. And maybe you let your eyes close. Or you can bring your feet together in Sutta Vada Kanasana. If you wish to let your hips open more. And maybe if you're in Sutta Vada Kanasana position, you bring one hand to your heart and one hand to your belly. But find your gentle place of rest. And I'll share with you a reading from that same book, Fear, Essential Wisdom for Getting Through the Storm. When we recognize that we have the habit of replaying old events, and reacting to new events as if they were old ones. We can begin to notice when that habit energy comes up. We can then gently remind ourselves that we have another choice. We can look at the moment as it is, a fresh moment, and leave the past for a time when we can look at it compassionately. We can make the time and space, not in a busy moment, but in a quiet time. To tell the suffering, wounded child inside us that she doesn't have to suffer anymore. We can take her hand and invite her to come into the present moment and witness all the wonders of life that are available here and now. Come with me, dear one. We have grown up. We no longer need to be afraid. We are no longer vulnerable. We are no longer fragile. We don't have to be afraid anymore. You have to teach the child in you. You have to invite him to come with you and live life with you in the present moment. Of course, we can mindfully reflect upon and learn from the past. But when we do this, we stay grounded in the present moment. If we are well grounded in the present moment, we can look skillfully at the past and learn from it without being sucked in and overwhelmed by it. And start to wiggle your fingers and toes. And gently come to one side in a fetal position. Hands can be joined together in Anjali Mudra at your third eye. And when you're ready, you can start to come to a seated position. And I'll invite two sounds of the bell to close our practice today. And I bow to the light in each of you. And thank you for sharing this practice together. Namaste. Namaste.